Hello, everyone, and welcome. This is a live recording here on the Rachel Varga podcast, on the Rachel Varga YouTube channel, and at Rachel Varga Official on Facebook. I'm so grateful that you guys have taken the time to join me here. I am all about sharing with you guys, if this is your first time tuning in, ways that we can really optimize our body, mind, spirit, and energy to bring forth a higher level of health. But also, when you are feeling good, you're going to look better too. So this is just all about giving you guys the tools to help you navigate this whole thing of being a human in a beautiful way and also helping you, um, you know, learn about different ways that you can interact with people, places and things, especially at this time, we sort of need a little bit more of that positive message now more than ever. So just wanting to check in if you're joining live, please leave a comment or question in the comment section here. And I will be answering them live on this call here. But I can't see who you are who you who's tuning in, unless you leave a comment. All right, so just checking in, just wanting to see where you guys are at. Yesterday, I definitely gave myself some time in nature with one of my best friends. We just got out into the woods, off the grid, away from any people or you know, sounds of technology or civilization, just to really like empty ourselves and just just get grounded so that you know I can return and continue to do this work. So we have a very lovely guest with us today. We have Haley San, and we we are going to be talking about a few really cool things in this episode here. This is a live Q and A with insight into dermal rolling and peels, um, because what I'm talking about right now is a, about ways that we can really optimize what we're doing to get that glowing skin just in time for summer. And typically, if you want great skin, you also want to um you know look after yourself on various different different ways so i do commend you for taking that time to prioritize your self-care but first we have Haley san with us today to get us on track with our meal prep and fitness so this is something that i need a little bit of help with because this isn't my area of expertise so Haley, i would love for you to just tell us a little bit about yourself all right well thank you rachel so much for having me i'm so excited to be here um, so my name's Haley. I got my degree in nutrition and exercise physiology, and I started out as a nutrition educator, really thinking that I was going to do some education on the types of foods we need to be eating and have an incredible impact on the face of American health. And what I realized when I got out there and started speaking to people is that most of us know what healthy is and what healthy isn't. That's not really the issue that we're facing. We just don't know how to get those healthy foods on our table. It's a real challenge and a real struggle for most people. So our days are busy. We're, you know, active working. We've got kids, social lives, a family, and we're just trying to get through the day. And most of the time, our food is kind of an afterthought. So we just get to mealtime, we're hungry, we need something quick and easy. And so a lot of us are just resorting to fast food, gas station, something from our freezer or something that delivers. And so I started a meal prep and delivery service that did healthy, gluten-free, dairy-free, everything taken to your door as a way to kind of bridge that gap between um, where people are and where I wanted to help them. But again, I got to this place where it was like, I'm just uh, handing out fish all day long and I'm not teaching anyone how to do this themselves. So if something happens to my company, all of these people that I'm helping are just gonna be right back where they were before they had my service. So I decided to take the process of planning that I was using in my meal prep and delivery service and boil it down into something that anyone can use at home. So when it comes to cooking at home and just eating in general, there's very little planning behind what we do. And so what I gave people is the step-by-step, -step, what you need to do first, second, third, fourth, in order to get your fridge stocked with healthy, ready-to-eat meals in just a couple of hours, one day a week, 
for less money than you ever thought possible. And now at mealtime, you're not stressed out. You're not running around trying to figure out what to eat. You're already taken care of. So that's where we are today and and now. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think that's fantastic. I am uh, a little bit lucky because my husband is a professional athlete. We had a comment come in here. Varga family, yes, we are a family on a mission to help people be happier, healthier, live better, stay motivated, all that. And so so my husband, he's a six-time pro world champion kickboxer. So health, nutrition, fitness is very important to us. And I'm fortunate that he keeps me in check, but there's a lot of people out there that aren't in that situation. And they just simply don't have the information necessary to, you know, to really understand how to efficiently eat and exercise. So I'd like to just kind of jump into that. And if you're listening, watching, uh, Haley's information is going to be uploaded after this live call into the description box. So you can get a hold of everything that Haley's talking about. Love to share these resources with you. But first of all, let's talk about efficiency with our eating and exercise, because that's really the groundwork for getting healthy, beautiful skin and having a healthy body. And in previous live sessions, I have shared with you guys ways that you can actually test that yourself from the comfort of your own home. So head on over to toolboxgenomics.com. I'm just going to write this in here. So it's toolboxgenomics.com slash Rachel. And why I'm sharing this is because I want you guys to get smarter about what you're putting in your body. And the only way that you're going to know that is if you start to do testing. So whether that's lab panels, blood analysis. So this is a cool test that I've done. And the ones that are in particular for uh, specific to skin are the nutrition and detox panels. You can order these for about $250 US. This code will give you 10% off toolboxgenomics.com slash Rachel, because you can listen to all the advice that's out there, but it might not be the right advice for you. For example, coconut oil, Tons of people touted it as being just this incredible oil. Same with quinoa. And then some people, based on their specific genetic physiology, they actually don't do well with it. And it actually can cause either GI disturbances or skin reactions. So just because you hear something is healthy doesn't necessarily mean that it's healthy for you. So this is really where skin rejuvenation, regenerative medicine, biohacking is going, is going into you know, how can we really customize what we're doing? So let's talk efficiency with our eating and exercise. Haley, what what kind of tips do you have for us today on this topic? Yeah, so this is huge. Again, when we're eating and exercising, a lot of times it's an afterthought. So it's in the moment, do I have time to do this? Do I have time to, you know, get a healthier lunch? Or do I have to settle for the drive through? Um, am I going to cook tonight? Or am I going to be too tired and the family is going to be too hungry and we're just going to do something really quick and easy? So for both of these, we need to plan ahead. So when it comes to eating, it's not just about, oh, I I need time to go to the grocery store. You need to make time to carry those groceries all the way through to their final stage, which is ready to eat. So what I recommend is making um, a list of the meals of the foods that you want to eat for the next week, have recipes that you're going to use with those specific foods. So a lot of times what I hear from clients is I, um, you know, I went to the store, I bought all the fruits and vegetables that would work for me and it was great. And I put them in my fridge and then they went bad and I didn't get to eat them. And on top of buying those foods, I was also paying for other meals because I didn't cook what was in my fridge. I just let it sit there and go bad. So this is where it comes down to planning and making enough time for the whole process. So you decide the foods that you want to eat based on hopefully what um, your genomics are telling you. You make a plan for how you're going to use those foods, what recipes you're going to use for them. You make a grocery list and then you go to the store, buy all that stuff, take it home and then cook it. So that's the final step that a lot of us kind of skip over. It's like, well, I did buy them. I did have the recipes. I did that planning. And then they just sat in my fridge. So we need to make sure that we're actually getting the cooking done. And then for um, exercise, 
I put that on my calendar and I recommend that everyone schedule that on your calendar because things are going to pop up. But if you ha already have the time set aside to do your workout, then that thing popping up isn't going to affect you not having the time to do your workout. So make sure it's scheduled. Um, you have a designated time set aside for that and you're never going to miss it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's really key. And I just wanted to just do a little PSA here. So this really segues into every single aspect of how we're living our lives. I really want to encourage you guys to all become more conscious consumers, whether it's your beauty products, whether it's your food, don't waste things, right? So one of the things that I like to talk about is just keep your skincare super simple, cleanser, moisturizer, sunscreen, scrub, basics, boom, that's it. We do not need this 365 skincare step, right? Keep it really basic. This is what the science is showing us. This is what the results are, are, are showing us, you know, nearly a decade of working with people, thousands of people in the clinic and online, and a number of celebrities actually that I work with too, which is kind of cool. But be a more conscious consumer, really, really understand when you're purchasing all of these extra things that are on sale right now, you're lending to additional waste and be very conscious about which companies you are supporting, especially at this time. It's really, really key. And another PSA, you guys have heard me say this before, don't get your supplements and your skincare products off these third party websites because you don't know if they're counterfeit or you know what type of uh, company you're supporting on that end because the counterfeit uh, beauty industry, supplement industry, household product industry is actually touted as being bigger than the drug trafficking trade. If you don't believe me, just watch that that, that Netflix on uh, the series on Netflix called Broken. It really um, sheds light on this, and it's a health thing because you don't know what's necessarily actually in those products. It's just like the concept of that Louis Vuitton looks real too, but it is, it's a fake one online. So it's like that. So just be really, uh, be a more conscious consumer. I love what you said about scheduling in your food and your exercise, because sometimes, you know, life gets away on us a little bit. We're stuck in that nine to five grind. You got to pick up the kids, got to do this, that, the other thing. Well, newsflash, no one's going to tell you to look after yourself unless they really, really, really love you, like my husband. <laughs> Have you exercised today? Maybe you shouldn't be eating that ice cream. Maybe you should be doing this. I mean, he's brutally honest with me and I love him for it. I never wanted to be with anyone that I was gonna be nagging. So we keep each other in check. And I wanted to mention that because we had a, a listener that uh, was on, did a comment about the Varga family. So, so in terms of scheduling it in, just throw it in your iPhone calendar. Any mm -hmm. other tips? Well, I think when it comes to working out, uh, a lot of us feel like just 10, 15, 20 minutes isn't worth it. And what I want to tell you is that it is. Something mm -hmm. is always better than nothing. So if there is a day where you're like looking at your calendar and you're like, oh my gosh, it's so full. I only am going to have, you know, 10 minutes here, 15 minutes there. Don't, that doesn't mean you should skip it just because it's going to be shorter. It's always worth it. And even if you're just starting out and you're like, I don't think I could do a full, you know, 20, 30 minute workout, start with 10 minutes, strap on your tennis shoes, take a walk around the block and just get used to getting in the habit of putting on your workout clothes, getting out there, doing a little bit of something. Cause that's going to snowball into doing much more. Yeah. And also for your mood, I really like getting outside in nature and, um, taking off my shoes and going barefoot, stuff like that. So one of the things that I did yesterday, I told you about this earlier, because we went live in summer skin camp, and we went into a lot more detail than what we're going to be doing in this live call here. But it just gives you a little bit of a preview of some of the goodness we covered. But yesterday, I really took that time to get out in nature with one of my best friends, we actually recorded a podcast outside in the back of my Jeep, with our bear bells or bear spray handy. And <laughs> I'm not kidding you. Like, this is where I, I live. <laughs> I didn't want to just, you know, sit outside because there's nobody around for hours. There's no cell phone reception. We're like three hours at a reception. And that's where I go. I schedule that element of self-care mm -hmm. in because that allows me to just kind of like empty everything. And things are pretty heavy right now. Things have always been a little bit heavy. There's always been things happening in the world. And so it's just really important for you to recognize how important it is for you to really specifically take time for that self-care. 
And it's going to look different for everybody. For my husband, his church is working out, right? I feel so much better when I even just take that 10, 15 minutes of, you know, just stopping what I'm doing, go outside, get some sunshine, take my shoes off, get the feet out there on the ground, move around a little bit, get that blood flowing, get that lymphatic drainage moving, get, get your lymph moving around, right? Because um, that actually helps to support our, our immunity as well, is to get everything flowing in our body and not getting stagnant. So a quick question, how can we ramp up our hydration for better skin and body? Oh my gosh, this is huge, especially during the summertime when if everything's warmed up, we're sweating a little bit more. So it's just about reminding yourself that, you know, if you are sweating, if you're drinking caffeine and if you're drinking alcohol, you're going to be prone to dehydration. So you need to replace those fluids. Um, if you have a couple of glasses of wine in the evening, you need to match that with your water, which is really important. So um, making sure that you're just drinking plenty of fluids throughout the day. Um, we kind of talked about a little bit about electrolytes and how those impact your hydration as well. So we absorb water better when there's some minerals uh, around it. So you can do a little bit of pink Himalayan sea salt into mm -hmm. your water to help your body hydrate. And especially that's going to be depleted when you're sweating a lot as well. Um, so replacing that is super helpful. And then uh, making sure you're on point with your nutrition. So you know what your body wants and likes is going to go a long way towards helping your body absorb that water. And that comes down to our gut health and what's going on in our gut. So We want to make sure that we're caring for our gut the best we can. A little bit of collagen is really helpful for sealing all of that um, and just making sure we know what the types of foods that our body likes so that we're always um, repairing and replenishing our gut health. Yes, this is really, really important here talking about alcohol and I'm just pulling up a resource for you guys live here. So if you know anything about me, I am trained as a sommelier. I do enjoy wine, but I hate the way it makes me feel. Uh, actually, I did my sommelier training. I just says, yeah, on my birthday, I'm going to get the certification. Why not? I like to challenge myself and do things that interest me, that excite me, that I'm going to be learning about because it's actually really good for your, uh, for your brain. Okay, so I'm giving you a resource here for clean wine. So if you haven't heard of Dry Farm Wines, I have a really great podcast with the creator of this. And I really, um, I want you guys to check that out, that episode on the Rachel Varga podcast, Dry Farm Wines. And so it's a cleaner wine. It's a lower alcohol wine, but it's lab tested and it's free of all the toxins. Did you know that in our alcohol, there's anywhere from up to 40 different added ingredients that don't need to be listed on the label? Oh my gosh, it's sick. All the, yeah. all the loopholes with the yeah. labeling. So this link right here, dryfarmwines.com slash Rachel Varga will actually give you access to this wine and get you a bottle of wine for a penny. And yeah, it's, it's just great. You're supporting a really great company. They take awesome care of their employees and they're just doing some really wonderful things in the world to um, really help people become more conscious consumers with the type of alcohol that they're drink, they're drinking, they're giving out lots of great information. So I, I do recommend that you just check this out, dryfarmwines.com slash Rachel Varga, and educate yourself on the wine industry, the alcohol industry, because a lot of times women think that, or men as well, that, oh, it's just the sulfites that are making me flush, that are making me feel very good, or it's the high sugar content. No. It's actually all the extra added garbage that doesn't need to be on the label for, for example, the different um, agents that are intended to stop the fermentation process so the wine is sweeter. And even if you're getting like an organic French wine, it's still the same thing, right? They're, they're not considered these clean, dry wines. Um, so yeah, lower alcohol content as well. So you could still enjoy having your cocktail say at like a social gathering and then you don't have to worry about you know getting too tipsy or things like that so that's actually one of my favorites i just wanted to uh, share that with you because i'm all about sharing tips for being a more conscious consumer because as soon as i heard that there were like 40 extra additives plus in wine that isn't listed on the bottle and uh, grapes are becoming a commodity much like 
corn and wheat. And so a lot of the wines and beers that you're finding on the shelves in the stores are from like 40 of the same farms. Oh, wow. Yeah, yeah. that's that's eye opening. Yeah. Yeah. So just uh, wanted to give a shout out to that resource there. I'm all about resources. Okay. So what foods make us bloated? Oh my gosh, this is huge, especially when we're talking about bikini weather. We want to make sure that we're not feeling bloated and uh, just not good. Also kind of heavy and just not our best. So when it comes to foods that bloat us, you want to be aware of anything that comes in a package with a label. Um, and I know that sounds really broad, but anything that's in a package that has a label on it has been processed in some sort of way. So just checking those labels and educating yourself as a consumer, empowering yourself to know exactly what you're putting into your body. We kind of talked about this a little bit before, but you're the only one who has that job. It's no one else's responsibility but yours. So educating yourself on the types of ingredients that are going into your food, how much sodium is going to work for your body. You know, depending on your size and your activity level, you might need a little bit more, a little bit less sodium. So knowing what kind of makes you feel bloated and what, what level doesn't, it's different for everyone. Um, but checking those labels, if there's an ingredient on there, that you don't recognize, then your body isn't going to recognize it either. And a lot of times when we eat those types of ingredients, um, you know, man-made, manufactured, really chemically processed, our body is struggling to break those down and figure out what to do with them and figure out how to process them. So really being aware of that. And then um, sodium level. So if you're eating at a restaurant, a lot of times there are foods that seem like they might not have a ton of sodium in them but they do. One of the highest sodium content foods um, at a restaurant here in the States is just a typical regular sandwich. It's just bread, cheese, a little turkey, a little mayo, and a little lettuce, and it's got like 5,000 milligrams of sodium. So being aware of where sodium comes from in your diet, two of the highest um, food uh foods with sodium in them, or the highest consumption are bread and cheese. So neither of those are necessarily really salty, but they're loaded with sodium. So it's just being aware of where it's coming from in your diet, how it's affecting you personally. And I like to tell my clients, like, plan ahead. Um, if you know kind of what your eating schedule is going to be like, you can plan ahead to have some of those more splurgy items at a particular day in the week that isn't going to leave you feeling bloated on the done. And that, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. So maybe you want to leave it for Sunday and then you're going to have the whole week to kind of let your body like deep bloat and you're going to be ready for the next weekend, but planning ahead for that. And then also cooking at home comes back into this. So that's when you're preparing your own food. That's the only way to know exactly what's going into your food. So cooking mm -hmm. at home is huge for cutting back on those processed ingredients, cutting back on those ingredients that your body doesn't understand and doesn't know how to break down and making sure that you're getting the most nutrient dense foods that you can. Mm -hmm. And again, getting back to being a more conscious consumer, what I started to notice is when I wanted to get out into a place in nature, I wasn't stopping at the coffee shop to pick up a coffee or a sandwich or whatever. I was bringing my phone, my, my phone. I was getting away from my phone going into nature where there's no reception, but I was bringing my own food from home in a reusable container. So I was actually really noticing during this whole quarantine time that we were creating less waste because we were we were actually getting our food from home and taking it with us, right? And I always use a reusable uh, coffee mug as well. So packing my own water, I pack everything in either like glass or stainless steel. So we, we move away from this, um, just how we've come to live in a world of ease with everything in plastic bottles or packages and things like that. So just kind of something I observed was that during this time, we were able to be more conscious of what we're eating and taking everything with us and creating less garbage with our foods by preparing things at home. And I think that's really important to just notice. There's a lot of other things that we can notice right now. And that's one thing that I've, I've really noticed at this time. Absolutely.
Mm -hmm. Okay, so one of the questions that I have for for everybody is, you know, let's let's talk bikini zone for the ladies and face and neck for men because I just wrapped up. We, Kaylee and I, we we wrapped up a live call in Summer Skin Camp right before this, and these are some of the questions that I'm getting from my male and female uh, clients in Summer Skin Camp, and also those who book one on one sessions with me at RachelVarga.ca. Is how do I get rid of like razor burn, razor stubble, those pesky ingrown hairs. So we all get them in different places, but they tend to occur where we have coarse hair. So pubic hairs, right? So one thing that I want you guys to start to do is get a sharp razor, get a new razor. And the first thing I want you to do is to take off that strip of, you know, that, that lubricant that, you know, that little strip on the top of the razor. Mm -hmm. it, if you smell it, it's typically fragranced. So I want you to just rip that off because I got a new razor for women and it had this massive like chunk of who knows what the heck was in it oh my gosh. on the top of the razor and on the bottom of the razor. So it's basically like a soap. Um, there's probably parabens, phthalates, sulfates, artificial dyes, fragrances is probably tested on animals. And I don't even know if the ingredients in those little strips are even listed on the razor. So I, again, taking you guys back to becoming a more mm -hmm. conscious consumer. If you smell something and it smells really fragranced, well, what is that, right? What's going on there? And I'm sharing this because we need to limit what we're exposing ourselves to in regards to our toxic load. If you want great skin, if you want to look good, if you want to feel good, if you want to navigate being a human well and in a beautiful, vibrant and radiant way, you have to start to tune into these things and how you know your interactions are with people places and things. So before we dive into the next topic that we're going to discuss uh, on this call here with 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 Haley Sun, um, before we dive into dermal rolling and chemical peels, what is your skin doing, Haley? How 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 are things going for you in your skin? So well, so we had our consultation like three, about three weeks ago, I think. I got all my stuff in the mail. Um, when we spoke, I had some dermatitis around my mouth. I had this just really rough skin that couldn't, I couldn't moisturize enough. Um, so since then, I noticed right mm -hmm. away, I, the first night I used my uh, gel cleanser and then my scrub. And the next morning, my skin was like soft and dewy and plump. Um, which was incredible. The dermatitis cleared up within two or three days, which is awesome. And I've just noticed like it's so much tighter around here, um, around my mouth, and then under my chin and neck is like already so much tighter. So I'm getting ready to start using my dermal roller and my actives. I'm so excited. Yeah, that's great. And it's really common for me to have people complain about and seek my assistance on this for, sorry, that's just my water because I'm t staying hydrated, right? <laughs> yes. You have to, yeah, I you have, have to, to have my fluids around all the time. I have my supplements right next to me too, so I don't forget to take them. And the, the changes of skin during the seasons are real. So I do recommend that you sort of revamp what you're doing every change of season, or if your skin is telling you it needs a little bit of shift to happen to it. And I don't recommend that you try and YouTube and Google this stuff. I do recommend that you just, you know, you can easily just book a session with me and have a one-on-one -on -one with me at rachelbarka.ca. And I'm happy to go through this with you uh, for people all over the world, which is super fun. You get to hang out for an hour. You get to pick my brain. But yeah, the contact dermatitis is something that I see all the time. This interview, this information that I share here is not to be taken as medical advice. It's educational information. If you think you have a medical problem, you must seek the guidance of a physician. And before making any lifestyle modifications, I do recommend that you see a physician as well before you make any changes. But that's great to hear that you are observing changes in your skin, that reduction of redness, dryness, irritation, it sounds like your skin's feeling smoother, glassier. Have you started to notice any changes in your, you know, your pore size yet? Yeah. So I can tell right on my cheeks, um, they look a lot smaller and just smoother. There's not so much redness around my nose at all. Um, and my forehead, even though I do have a little bit of like wrinkling in there, I can't really see it anymore, which is so interesting. 
Yeah, that's great. And how long bouts did it take for you to notice your changes? Uh, two days. I mean, it was crazy how fast it was. I did not expect that. That's awesome. Typically, I'll hear about two weeks. And uh, the, the literature does say up to a month because believe it or not, that's actually the length of our skin cell cycle for our you know skin cells to be made deep below the surface of the skin and then make its way up to the top where we actually see it, it's about a month. And as we age, that slows down. So we can actually do things to tell our skin to make more collagen, to speed up that cell cycle using different at-home or in-clinic treatments and also different actives like vitamin A and retinol. So let's talk about dermal rolling now. So tell me, Haley, what did you think about dermal rolling when you first started to hear about it? I think you might have bought one online yourself, just like everybody else. I did. Us. Yeah. So I'm a big like skin, like anti-aging junkie. So I um, <laughs> did a lot of research before I ever met you. And that was one thing that came up. So I thought like every other consumer, I'll just go buy one on Amazon and it'll be great. So I used that a little bit, but you kind of mentioned this, like they can be a little bit more irritating. And so mm. I wouldn't use it that often just because my skin would get red and inflamed. Um, so I had that experience with it and I just kind of stopped using it altogether. So when you brought it back up at kind of a fraction of the size that I had purchased, I was like, I don't know about this or what, you know, how this is any different really. And then you were very um, enlightening on all of that. I love it. So if you're listening, you're like, what the heck is dermal rolling? So dermal rolling is also known as collagen induction therapy. You can do a simple search online for the multiple research papers that are out there that are basically highlighting the fact that we can do this treatment at home to tell our skin to make more collagen via the mechanism of a controlled injury with at home microneedling. So I love to recommend at home dermal rolling as an affordable option to improve our skin, uh, to promote skin health. Vitamin A is really also quite important for, for cellular renewal. And internal vitamin A is really important for uh, skin cancer protection also. So when I'm talking about skin and, and helping you guys out with helping your skin look better, it's also a health thing. Skin is our biggest organ and it's a big reflection of what's going on on the inside. So you need to start to become more in tune and intuitive with your body, how you're feeling after you're eating certain foods. Are you getting gassy? Are you bloated? Are you sneezing after 10, 15 minutes of eating something that doesn't agree with you? Believe it or not, that's how I can tell if something isn't right for me. That's kind of one of my barometers. So dermal rolling is a way to promote collagen in the skin by basically poking little little holes using needles um, on a roller to create channels of dermal injury. And then you're able to put products uh, into those channels to basically be absorbed transdermally, really cool. Uh, the latest number of different types of collagen that I've heard through some of my interviews with some of the leading health experts out there is there's about 16 different types of collagen. So dermal rolling creates a different type of collagen than say your lasers are going to create, which I think is really fascinating. And more types of collagen are actually being discovered all the time. That's what's kind of neat about this, this field of regenerative medicine and aesthetic medicine and aesthetic nursing is that it's constantly evolving. So you guys coming in and tuning in with Haley and I here, here on the Rachel Varga podcast, YouTube channel, Facebook, you guys are on the right track. You guys are really, um, I do my best to stay up to date with the latest uh, research and information out there. So the thing with rolling where people go wrong is they'll pick up their rollers online. They'll go to these third party auction websites and they'll just buy whatever's cheapest, right? Like a three pack for 20 bucks or a 10 to 15 use roller. But what they don't know is those rollers are often made in some of these countries that are, you know, Southeast Asia. And the the metal in those rollers are actually an alloy that could be potentially harmful and contain heavy metals. There's not a lot of um, governing and and restrictions on how things are created in a lot of these companies that are big manufacturing companies. So what can also happen is the little needle on the roller can actually come out of the barrel if they're made improperly and get embedded into the skin. I've had a colleague of mine share this experience that she 
I met with someone who bought a roller online and it came off in her face. And also you need to make sure that you're working with the right depth because there are different lengths of the needle. So I would bet for you, if you had a lot of irritation and it kind of hurt while you were rolling, your roller was probably too long. And so I do recommend meeting with me to get a little bit more insight into if dermal rolling is going to be right for you, if it's really going to help you address your skin goals and how to go about using it properly because there is a method to the madness there is a process you don't just want to buy a roller and you know go for it and hope for the best you do want to be using products that are going to be determined to be safe effective and have been researched and there's lots of products out there that have been researched for decades which is which is great so how do you roll first of all you get a good roller i'm happy to get you organized with that but first of all you stabilize your skin by what you just did Haley. you you followed my protocol that I'd laid out for you. You're already starting to see some nice changes. And then you start to kick it up a couple of notches by integrating your actives. Then you're rolling. But you have your great uh, stabilizing protocol on hand at home to mitigate that expected slight irritation that you're going to get from that controlled injury. So that's sort of the method to the madness <laughs> in a nutshell. Do you have any questions? No, I'm just excited to get started. And now that like everything is kind of calmed down to like really start boosting my collagen and I'm, I'm sure see a lot like more tightness and reduction in the lines and all of that. Yeah, it's, I think it's a great long term strategy. I mean, with things being closed down, I really relied on my skincare, uh, looking after myself, body, mind, spirit, energy that I talk about here on the, these platforms and durable rolling. But one of the things that I do want to start talking about is, you know, how can we basically do an at-home chemical peel? So not, I'm being very specific here. We're not actually talking about like buying your own solution of chemical peels that I use in the clinic and trying to go for it yourself because you have to be really careful with this stuff. You can't get it into your eyes. You don't want to be inhaling some of these solutions. So um, in I do want to do a little bit of a PSA here in regards to at home stuff like at home injectables, at home chemical peels, at home, you know, micro needling with, with the pens and things like that. You really, really want to steer clear of that stuff. <laughs> it's really scary stuff. Yeah, it is actually. And it's a bit of an epidemic in the States, especially uh, that my U.S. Um, physicians and nurses that I'm uh, in connection with and that I teach and we all learn from, collaborate with, um, collaboration over competition, guys. It's really important Love to my it. industry to really kind of work together to provide better care for our patients. But the, the at-home chemical peel, there are some really cool advanced options that you can do with your dermal rolling with, say, a really great mask to be applied over top that will be like an at-home chemical peel. I won't get into the specifics of that here because it does need to be customized to what your needs are. So how does that sound? So good. I definitely want to get back with you and get one of those chemical peels because it sounds amazing. Yeah, well, the, well, the one that, that we talked about in summer skin camp because we went live earlier and did a bit of a deep dive on this stuff with the members of the group there. If you haven't yet registered, I do have a few slots available. Send me an email, info at rachelbarka.ca or uh, find me, send me a direct message at Rachel Varga Official on Facebook or Instagram here. The link for Summer Skin Camp to register is going to be in the description box below. But I don't want you guys to miss out on this content because I actually go beyond what we talked about in a consultation. Did you notice that? The content was incredible. I, I mean, we did a one-on-one -on -one consultation and the content that we just, that I just heard in there was like beyond. It was so good. So helpful. I learned so much. Yeah. I feel like all of the, the topics that I really cover in a one-on-one -on -one with you, I can actually make into three hours of, of, of content to teach. So that's what the seasonal um, summer skin camp and winter skin camp programs are helpful for. It's that ongoing live Q&A with me. So if you were to ask me what my favorite uh, facial treatments are, chemical peels, you now know. I do. Because <laughs> we went over that. Um, but, but basically I won't get into specific recommendations here on the platform be, uh, in this call because it's, it should be customized to be according to your needs. But what do we need to know about chemical peels? So what were some of the things that you learned about chemical peels? So I think that what to reiterate what you are saying is that it needs to be customized for you. And then there's a little bit of 
uh, consciousness around your sun exposure before and after, and then what type of I guess, topicals you're going to be using kind of around the time that you get your chemical peel as well. Oh my gosh. It's like you're taking notes. I love it. Did I get right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you rocked it, girl. <laughs> so what, what do I expect before and after? Well, it depends on the type of chemical peel you have. Some of these really great um, gentle uh, infusion type treatments, there's no downtime. And some of the deeper chemical peels, you're going to be looking at some flaking. So it really depends on what uh, what type of treatment you're getting. But in general, you want to be really kind to your skin leading up to it. Maybe for a week, avoid your actives, dermal rolling, retinol use. And then for a couple of days afterwards to, you know, up to one to two weeks afterwards, same thing. Avoid uh, use of your roller, your vitamin A, your actives. Don't go too crazy with your scrub. Let your skin heal. And then depending on the type of chemical peel or uh, in clinic treatments you're getting, you do need to follow the directions of your provider. These are there's you know hundreds of different types of chemical peels out there. Some are going to be deeper than others. Some you're going to have no flaking. Some you're going to have a lot of flaking and peeling for about three to six days. I have this adorable YouTube video on my channel where I actually show my face peeling. <laughs> that's a guts. <laughs> that is that's a lot of guts, Rachel. Good for you. Yeah. But I was having really bad breakouts on my neck uh, from something that happened to me. Um, I, was, I, I had an injury, and so my body was like freaking out. So I was like, oh my gosh, what do I do, right? So I had this chemical peel, and it just it really sorted things out for me. So uh, that was great. Uh, so some of the things that I want to recommend that you guys do is say maybe get um, a treatment at this time, start to get some laser hair removal because what I wanted you guys to do uh, in Summer Skin Camp when we went live, and also when I did a shout out to what men and women can be doing, you know, for the ladies, for the men, if you get a lot of ingrowns, um, laser hair removal could be an option for you, but it does significantly depend on what skin type you have. So um, you can't just you know, book a laser hair removal session and you might not have this uh, skin type that could be appropriate for that. And so more info on that when you meet with me. In general, avoid your actives for one week before and one week after. That's really important. And another thing is when we're talking about our diet and our nutrition and how we're living our lifestyle, you'll find this interesting, Haley, but when I work with people and I can tell they're very inflammatory, mm. they have you know diffuse redness to their skin, they just don't look that healthy, they don't really have that like vibrancy because they're not feeding themselves properly. Mm -hmm. These are the type of people that have a lot of inflammation going on and what we call inflammaging. And they tend to be more sensitive to different treatments in the clinic, whether it's chemical peels, lasers, or injectables. So what's your take on sort of like our body's inflammation from our foods and how we can reduce it? So I think, first of all, it's important to, whether you do the DNA test or not, just be aware of what foods are really affecting you. And this just can really come down to awareness, like take, taking note of how you feel before and after. Um, what type of reactions you have. A lot of times, if you're sensitive to foods, it'll pop up on your skin. So you're going to see it or you're going to feel it. So in terms of like slowing down on your bowel movements, all of that is huge and hugely important to becoming aware of what foods are affecting you. And of course, like with any skincare routine or, you know, boosting your, the health of your skin, you got to start with what you're putting into your body first. Mm -hmm. Hydration is going to be huge. So making sure you're drinking plenty of water and then taking in the nutrient and antioxidant rich foods first and foremost. So cutting back on the processed packaged foods as much as possible and focusing on the plant foods. So you want to go into that produce section, take a lap around, um, pick out things of various different colors. You want to do about 30 plus different types of plants each week and get a range of colors in there as well. So the entire rainbow in there is going to be really helpful. All of those nutrients in your foods work synergistically together to help your body function. So, and the colors mark 
the types of nutrients. So if you get a broad range of colors, you're going to get a broad range of nutrients, which is going to go a long way to reducing inflammation and making sure that your skin is able to repair itself. Because if your body is suffering on the inside and it's not able to repair itself because it doesn't have the proper nutrients, your skin's going to suffer too. It's not going to be able to get to that either. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think that's really key. So one of the things that I just want everybody to just tune into is pay attention to everything in your environment right now, whether it's things that you're smelling, things that you're putting on your skin, things that you're hearing, things that you're seeing, the type of energy of, of people that you're around, uh, because this, things are really tricky. And I find that for me personally, I have to do a lot of work around my self care, body, mind, spirit and energy in order to really navigate these times so that I don't get bogged down so mm -hmm. that I continue to be able to do uh, this work. So how, how, how to balance body? How do you do it? So I, I think first and foremost, we need to allow all that whole range of emotions. So the good and the bad, a lot of times we think when we are working on our emotional health or kind of, you know, our mental health, it's about feeling good all of the time. And so when a bad emotion does pop up, we try to resist it, which in and of itself is inflammatory. So making sure, like I had a day this week, I just felt really heavy and really sad. And I just allowed that and I felt sad the whole day and that was okay. Like it didn't mean that anything has gone wrong or that I needed to resist or avoid that or you know escape from it. So I just allowed it. I took some time for extra self-care. I went on a nice long walk without my phone so there was no social media there was no listening to anything it was just like listening to my own thoughts kind of having a little bit of therapy <laughs> walking around in nature being with that so i think nature is really important for a lot of people and also knowing what works for you so some people do really well with like talking it out with a friend or a family member i do better when i just kind of let my thoughts be there and kind of work through them on my own. So knowing what works for you, taking some time for you to, to disconnect that social media, that constant stream of other people's opinions can be really wearing and tearing. Um, so disconnecting and then um, just allowing it. If, it. if you don't feel that great, that's okay. It's part of life. Yeah. So I mentioned earlier that yesterday I did my you know weekly session with my best friends and she's she's had a really hard upbringing and we recorded a podcast on this talking about really acknowledging the shadow and also the light because mm -hmm. if we live in a world of duality there's going to be both there's always going to be there and I totally agree with you to just take that time to acknowledge when you're having an emotion say you're getting triggered by something because people are getting ultra triggered right now. So now more than ever, we do need to be very sensitive in our interactions with people um, so that we don't trigger people, right? Mm -hmm. So that we can be of help to ourselves, our families, our communities, and beyond as best we can. So getting out in nature, absolutely, it's, it's not a luxury for me, it's a survival. <sighs> and when I get into these places where I don't hear a single thing, I mean, yeah, it takes effort for me to get there, but it's something that my body just craves and I mm -hmm. feel so good after. Oh my gosh. And, I mean, it's free, you just get there, right? And I, I just really had the moment of, um, you know, standing on this beautiful sort of plateau overlooking this massive ancient forest, like these are like very sacred lands on uh, Vancouver Island and just the rolling hills and the trees and this, these statuesque Douglas firs and eagles and knowing that there's bears and cougars around me. Uh, so I have to have all these bear bells and things like that. So I don't accidentally <laughs> sneak up on one. Right. That wouldn't be great because I saw two bears last weekend. Oh my gosh. No Crazy. Doubt. Crazy. So, but when you're in this, it's like, it actually was very um, disorienting for me, if I'm completely honest with you, being in a space that's so quiet. And I think it may even be similar to when you're in those sensory deprivation uh, float tanks. But I like being in nature because you have like the rustling of the trees, you hear the birds and you have the breeze and, and the sunshine with your sunscreen, of course. Huh? Oh, yes. <laughs> and oh, yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah, but it's like, that's what being a human is about. It's about experiencing being. And when we have our, our technologies and things like that, it really um, 
you know, it, it's, it's, is it good to know what's really going on in the world? Is it not like there's going to be two, two streams of thought there. I, I think it's important for us to be conscious of what's happening, but not to be there all the time, because what that's going to do is it's going to get you in that high beta state. And then you're going to get that cortisol dumping and what's going to happen. It's going to affect your thyroid. It's going to re- imp- create inflammation in your body. It's going to affect the way that you age, the way that you feel, your mood. So I'm really just doing a big PSA right now to check in with your mental health at this time. So the podcast I did with my bestie, she's struggled with mental health her whole life um, through various reasons. She had a very difficult upbringing. She was, um, you know, in really poor neighborhoods and they were gangs all around her, but those people needed to be in those environments to survive. So it was just a really interesting, eye-opening conversation with her sharing her experience of what that was like. And I think it's just really important for us to check in with ourselves, check in with our family members, if we need to ask for help, to ask for help. And, you know, I'm here to support you guys as best I can and share messages in this way. So yeah, Haley, what do you think? What's your thoughts on that? Oh my gosh, likewise. Like it's so important to disconnect and also connect (laughs) on a deeper level, you know, not just sitting on Facebook and commenting, but actually reaching out to the people in your life and asking if they're doing okay and how they're handling things. A lot of times when something really stressful and challenging like this comes up, it's our first reaction is to kind of like hide and um, you know, block it out and not communicate with those in our lives. But it's it's more important now than ever. And I think a lot of w- what's going on feels really disempowering. Like we're kind of sitting at home and we feel like we have no control, but you actually do. Educating yourself, communica- communicating with your community is your, is your power. And deepening those relationships in your community is where you're going to have a big impact in your life and it's going to be a ripple effect in the world around you. Yeah. Yeah. One of the other things that my girlfriend says, she's very deep, philosophical, incredible woman. We, she's more of like the shadow. I'm more of a light. And together we just balance each other out in this really, really lovely way. And you can't ignore the shadow because that will build up and create a whole other layer of, 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 body mind spirit energy physiological mental health issues Mm -hmm. as well so so what i like to do if i get a little bit triggered by something or feel an emotion come on i just like really like do what i can to just separate myself and just breathe right Mm -hmm. so breathe in breathe out and it's funny i went for a walk with my mom she's like rachel my blood pressure has been really low i haven't been feeling really good i'm like when was the last time you got your heart rate up mom your heart is a muscle you have to work it (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> so I made right. her go for a walk and I was listening to her breathing and she was breathing very oddly. It's like she'd breathe in and then she would do this like pursed lip breathing. I'm like, mm. like you have to like breathe in and just let it out. Like, what is that? A Wim Hof guy? I love his breathing stuff. Yeah, exactly. And and like using the lower part of your lung and not just the top part. That's This is when you just do those shallow short breaths that's actually a stress response that's telling your body that it's in stress. And so if you're breathing like that all of the time, your body always thinks it's in stress. So it's really important to kind of expand your belly when you breathe and like really get the air down there. That's a very relaxing state for your body. It wants you to be breathing like that all of the time. So it's like coming back to that breath that also brings awareness into your body and helps you helps to reduce that whole stress response and also helps with your mental like spinning thoughts and whatever's going around up there. So um, those big deep breaths are so important too. Yeah. And, and during these times when I get outside and I'm in, in the forest, right? So the air is going to be better. (laughs) Mm, Yes. (laughs) Oh my gosh. Newsflash trees make our air. And so if you want to show a little gratitude for these majestic trees that give us the air that we breathe, go for it. Because I think we kind of, we forgot about that stuff. And, and it's crazy, like when you're around places where you have, you know, access to this really clean air, you feel different. And when oh you gosh. breathe properly, you feel different. There's this whole cascade of um, regulation of hormones and reduction of cortisol and, and all of that. So just remember all that cool free stuff. Like you don't need to spend all this cash to get healthy. There's so many things that you can do for free, which is really what I love to talk about. Oh yeah, absolutely. It's it's all 
here for you, you know, and a lot of times that marketing kind of filters in and makes you believe that you have to purchase something in order to have that. You really don't. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so much uh, free stuff here on the Rachel Varga podcast, YouTube channel, all that cool stuff. So Haley, where can people find you? So you can find me on um, Instagram at Haley, H-A-Y-L-E-Y underscore Sohn, S-O-H-N. Um, you can find me on Facebook at Haley Sohn. You could also find my uh, business page on Facebook as well, which is just at basically it meals. Awesome. And all your information I'm going to drop in the show notes below, whether you're listening Perfect. on the podcast or on the YouTube channel. Please uh, send some love to Haley. You're spreading some lovely messages. And it was just a pleasure communing with you, connecting with you, uh, getting an update on how your skin's doing and what you can be doing next to kind of keep things on point for uh, summer. And also just, you know, tips for navigating, um, you know, these times, right? It's just, it's great to do, it's great to do a check-in. So that was a really, really nice live session with you today, Haley. And if you're listening on the podcast, please go ahead and subscribe. If you're listening on YouTube, subscribe, uh, leave a review, leave a comment. Let me know if you have any questions. Um, you can email me at info at rachelvarga.ca if you'd like more information on how to really optimize some of the stuff that we talked about in your life as well so that you become a more conscious consumer on every, every level. Absolutely. All right, guys. So until next time, thanks so much for joining us, Haley, and have a great day, everybody. Thank you.